I would say security was number one. The concern for fraud or organized fraud was number two. Obviously, there were other issues on people's mind, especially the, uh, the fact that the independent election commissions, those institutions that were in charge of making sure that we have proper elections in Afghanistan, had probably not done their whole homework, that there was much more that needed to be done in terms of reforms of the system after the very controversial 2014 elections and the 2018 parliamentary elections. Those three issues, I think, were highest on the minds of many people. I personally expected the turnout to be low, and it happens to be lower than expected, meaning that out of the 9.5 or so million registered voters that had been reported, even though there were some questions about that as well, out of that, um, it seems like somewhere between two to two and a half million Afghans uh, may have gone to the polls. There are still questions being asked about uh, the more realistic numbers. Was it lower? Was it higher? Uh, do these numbers include some fraudulent votes, uh, stuffed ballots as they are called, or do they not? And so everybody's looking at whether the system is going to cleanse and the system is going to filter the bad votes versus the good votes. And the hope is that after almost 15 years of democratic experimentation in Afghanistan with uh, the fourth uh, presidential election being held, that we will have uh, more credibility, not less, that we'll have more transparency, not less, and that at the end of the day, the Afghan people will have more trust in the system and not less. So in this election, we see that uh, large chunks of the uh, voting population did not turn out uh, for obvious reasons, as I mentioned, security being one of them, a loss of credibility and trust being another, and the fear of fraud uh, uh, being another. Um, the fact that the electoral commissions may not have uh, gone through enough reform over the past few years. Uh, but now uh, that we have this lesson in hand, I think that uh, next time around, whether it's parliamentary elections or presidential elections in Afghanistan, we will uh, apply the lessons learned. Uh, we will do everything possible to make sure that we re-attract the Afghan population in the voting com community to believe in the system and to take part in the system and to make democracy work in Afghanistan. That is a very critical issue. Uh, and for those who have done you know, their part in undermining democracy, that we identify them, that they're prosecuted, and that we uh, have a system where people can really believe uh, in uh, its credibility and its viability as a political system uh, for a country like Afghanistan. Well, they were both, uh, they were the top contenders. Um, they were also the two partners who formed the National Unity Government since 2014. Since 2014 was a sort of inconclusive uh, election. Uh, there was no clear winner, so the two leading candidates formed the Unity Government and they have worked at times fairly well, at times with some challenges over the last five years. Uh, they have. They come from different backgrounds, they have different experiences. Dr. Abdullah was someone who was raised and dealt with Afghanistan's issues from within. He has never left the country, he stayed throughout the war, took part in the resistance against the Soviets, then against Taliban and Al-Qaeda and others, and then joined the new government as foreign minister, is, has learned quite a bit. Uh, he's a medical doctor, ophthalmologist by trade, uh, but obviously became a politician. Ashraf Ghani, on the, hand, on the other hand, spent many, much of his life in the West, in the United States, was a professor, was an academic, was also uh, a, a, a World Bank official dealing uh, with research issues, anthropology mainly, uh, and uh, in, re-entered Afghanistan's political space after 2001, uh, worked as a for, uh, finance minister and then obviously went into politics. Uh, so they bring two different flavors and two different backgrounds. Um, some people thought it might work well, uh, others thought that there may be clashes. I think it's a mix of the, of the two.
So, Dr. Abdullah, uh, being uh, a government uh, partner over the last five years, played mostly a secondary role. He was not involved in most of the uh, executive decisions, even though Ashraf Ghani, um, uh, uh, as chief uh, commander in chief, was mainly in charge of security issues, the war. Uh, Dr. Abdullah had a secondary role, so he he, he was seen as not only a partner within government but also at times as opposition within the government um, in trying to bring a balance to the uh, affairs of state and to the decision making uh, that the country underwent. Uh, now the, uh, I think that um, at this point they have clearly uh, demonstrated that they have differences. At this point they have clearly demonstrated that they have different uh, uh, objectives uh, their policies at some t at times may overlap, at times they, they, they do not, especially in terms of the peace process and the future of a political settlement. I think Abdullah is more amenable to that and thinks that it can be achieved through a consensus built internally and regionally and internationally, whereas Ashraf Ghani is more concerned about how he can play a role as uh, uh, current president and again as future president if he's re-elected. Uh, and then uh, he would represent the state. But the state in Afghanistan obviously is a much broader concept than just the presidency. And so this is where I think that there is some kind of difference between the two. It remains to be seen, it's too early to tell at this point. First of all, we need to know what the exact turnout was. Secondly, we need to know what the good, clean vote versus the bad, dirty vote was. Thirdly, we need to know what motivated people to, to vote. And I think that there will be a mandate. If there is a mandate, it will have to be uh, twofold. Number one, it would have to show some kind of um, intention to move towards a just and inclusive political settlement leading to peace in Afghanistan. I think that that is what is paramount on most Afghan minds after many years of war and conflict and mayhem. Uh, number two, I think that there is a level of dissatisfaction with how the situation has evolved over the years. Uh, there are more than 60,000 Afghan security forces who have died over the last five years, over 100,000 who have uh, been injured, and double that number of civilians who have died in the conflict over the last five years alone. The economy is not doing as as good as people expected because it's a war situation. Uh, there's uh, the investment is, is, is has, has diminished um, and there's uncertainty about the future. So I think that part of the vote uh, signifies dissatisfaction from the population. The political calendar in Afghanistan for 2018 and 19 did not include peace talks initially. So the peace talks and the uh, dialogue between the Americans and the Taliban and the attempt at forging an intra-Afghan uh, process to lead to some kind of a settlement uh, was not on the calendar uh, sometime uh, in 2018. Uh, so obviously that clashed with what Afghanistan's calendar looked like. Uh, elections were, were uh, scheduled for early 2019. They were delayed twice. Uh, eventually, they took place. We know that the, the, the turnout wasn't that great. Uh, we don't know if there will be a clear mandate or not. Uh, but at the end of the day, the results will have to be accepted and the country will have to move towards what the majority population wishes. And I think the next government will have no other option but to take the country toward uh, a peaceful resolution of the Afghan conflict, but under the terms that most Afghans can agree. Uh, you know, that means obviously uh, protecting the gains of the last 18 years, the, the core issues that matter to Afghans, and then um, uh, eventually uh, coming up with a power sharing arrangement where that would work for all sides and would include those elements of the Taliban who are reconcilable and would agree to a new setup in Afghanistan. Now, there are many challenges ahead. At this point, some initial steps have been taken. It remains to be seen when and where and how under what conditions the Americans are going to uh, put the, the peace 
process back uh, uh, to work and follow and pursue that. Uh, I think that uh, eventually, uh, because of the American political calendar of elections in 2020 uh, and the pledges that uh, politicians, including President Trump, have given to the electorate, that the Americans will at some point uh, have to uh, get back to the business of making peace in Afghanistan.